What's up? I'm Channing Tatum, and this is Variety Uncovered. Need to get back in the game, sir. You want to get back in the game? Prove it. Sergeant Rodriguez was a legend. Family funeral Sunday outside of Nogales. They want his dog at the funeral. You do this, and you're back in the game. The reason I guess we made our way to this story, dog, started somewhere sad. I lost my dog, Lulu. She had cancer. She beat it, and then she got well again, and then she started limping, and then she got, it, it metastasized into her bones, and we spent, you know, months trying to, like, kind of try to beat it, and, you know, we just weren't gonna beat it. And she was very, very, very sick. I kept her around too long, and I went on this last road trip with her to Big Sur, and it was really sad, but cathartic, and, you know, I got to, like, say bye to her, essentially, and it happened to be at a part in my life where, you know, I was losing my best friend kind of at the wrong time. And it was it was really emotional. And we just started thinking, what if we did a story, you know, about that bond between man and beast and what happens, you know, what happens when no one else can crack you or no one else can crack the dog and somehow you just sort of work and fit. And, you, and a dog can like sort of just burst your heart open and make you love and care in ways that maybe you didn't think possible. It was really funny, like, when we were selling this thing, I had everybody, like, raise their hand to, like, see how many people own dogs, and it was a lot of people. Like, you know, so either you're a dog person or you're not. We sort of cobbled together this story of Briggs, a guy that's been medically discharged from the military, and he's trying to get back into contracting or some sort of military-esque job to kind of, like, get back in the saddle. He gets tasked with taking his buddy's dog to his dead buddy's funeral. He doesn't want to do this. He just wants to like go on with his life and he's kind of a little pissed off that he even has to do this thing to kind of get the thing that he wants, which is a job. So he does it and they hate each other. You know, craziness ensues on the road trip and we love road trip movies and we love dog movies, so we kind of just shoved it together. World's sexiest cover model, Dash McMahon! It's crazy. You feel like you're watching a movie, but you're in it at the same time. It's because I've grown up watching Sandra Bullock movies like my whole life. Some of my favorite movies are Sandra Bullock movies. Like Practical Magic, we still watch every single year on Halloween. Like it's just one of my favorite movies. Her reputation, you know, sort of precedes itself. You know, she's she's a boss. Not that many people can be a boss and still have fun on set. Some people have to rule with like an iron fist and things. She has so much fun. She's filled with so much love and cares so much about the things that she actually like takes on to do. Play Dash McMahon, which is actually my romance novel name. I play a, basically a cover model like Fabio for these romance novels, and she's the author and she hates me. She like doesn't want anything to do with me because I'm probably very annoying and very dumb, I would say, but my real name is Alan Finkelstein, uh, but I've legally changed my name to the character in the book, Dash McMahon. We weren't gonna make a third one. We were all kind of just like chewing the last bits of uh, the meat off the bone just to even make the second one. We learned so much on the first movie. I think we just wanted to make a little tiny subculture movie about a certain nine months, 10 months of my life that I was like, this was a crazy time and I haven't ever seen a movie made in the, in the world. We made that movie and we kind of caught this like 50 Shades of Grey wave and that turned into this like, iconic woman like power film and but it was about a man it was about a man kind of trying to like come to terms with what he wants to do with his life and kind of doesn't know where he's gonna land you know he's used to just partying and kind of living a very like free life the second movie we had all these amazing ancillary characters that we didn't have enough real estate on the first movie to explore so we were like that's a reason to make a movie and we made those movies and they're good movies and we were like let's get out of dodge before you know we fail and because you know, even the, the second movie didn't make a lot of money because they released it on the wrong day. Even though I kind of like the second movie more, it's more fun and just like, I think was more of what people expected the first movie to be maybe. And then I went away with Reed and did our live show. And I, w I didn't really even want to do a live show because I was like, I've worked in the actual stripping business and it, it can be dark. Like again, it's not, it's not as fun as the movies are. And then we had the ideas like, what if we changed it? Like what does it want to be? And what we created in our live show is my favorite thing I've ever created. Jess, I love you all, I thank you all. Let's go! It's just pure joy and like, you know, it's a sweaty good time, like, but it's not the sweaty kind that you want to go take a shower after. You're kind of, your makeup's a little messed up, but you actually feel good about your night. It's just the most fun and funny thing that we've created. 
And then Soderbergh saw that and he kind of fell in love with it. He's like, this is the coolest thing that I've seen in a really long time. We should create a movie around this. I think it's gonna be probably my favorite out of the three. And I also said, look, we're gonna break reality here. We're gonna make the Super Bowl of stripper movies if we're gonna do it. I don't, cause the first two movies we had to kind of stay kind of honest to what people were really dancing like. And we probably pushed it past like, they weren't dancing like that in these in these shows that I was in. There was, it was horrible for me. <laughs> like, it, wasn't, it wasn't about the dancing, it was about like flexing. Soderbergh, I think probably one of the biggest lessons is empowering people. He really hires people and expects them to bring their best work. He doesn't want to sit here and like scrutinize every word that you're saying and how you're saying it. He very rarely, if ever, gives like actor direction, like what's your intention here? Like he'll give dialogue notes and he just wants to like you to jump in fully and be fully committed and bring your absolute A game. You know, he doesn't want to tell you how to do your best A game. <laughs> Movies have changed so much. Social media has changed how we view actors and like we have so much access to everyone. I don't think they'll ever be like a Brad Pitt or like a Leo or Robert Redford or Denzel Washington's and anymore just because everything's sort of, you just know everyone too well. People are on social and you get to know them as uh, who they are and at their house with their kid. There's no mystery anymore. And then really they're only making like big giant like blockbuster sort of Marvel movies and things like that. I don't know, man, the things are just sort of, I think the studios are bygone. I think they're virtually all swallowed up by the streamers now anyway. So I think things are just gonna change and hopefully we'll always go to theaters. I really do hope that that stays, you know, a thing because I love going to movies still. I remember going to like Times Square when 8 Mile came out. Everyone was like standing up in the theater and like cheering and dancing and like kind of just like bobbing their head to like Eminem rapping. And I remember going to like As Good As It Gets and people giving a standing ovation as uh, at, at the end of the movie. This doesn't happen anywhere. Like this is cool.